Welcome back. Time to get that top 10 tally started. And you know what's topping the list. It has to be none other than Infosys. Uh, Rima is joining in. Uh, Rima and uh, I were together in the studios when those numbers came out. Absolutely phenomenal, aren't they, Rima? Yes, and the ADR uh, in you know on NYSE yesterday was up eight and a half percent. So that gives you a cue. Uh, but remember, the Infosys stock price here also has rallied. This month is up twelve percent, and since June, from levels of sub fourteen hundred, it's seen a rally of close to about twenty five percent. Now, Infosys has become the fourth IT company to report a beat after TCS, HCL Tech, and LTI Mindtree. But the margin of beat at Infosys is much, much higher. In fact, according to Bernstein, it's the best in the last 10 quarters. Now, very strong blockbuster numbers, beat on revenue, beat on margins, revenue growth at 3.6 percent on a quarter on quarter basis, and strong revenue growth reported after five quarters of a weakness. Margins too have expanded by 100 basis points. The company has gone ahead and upped its full year revenue forecast to 3 to 4 percent. This is driven by a good start to the year, Q1 being better than estimates. Two, the deal wins give them visibility into the remaining part of the year. And three, the consolidation of the acquisition of Intec that they have done. Uh, margin guidance has been retained at 20 to 22 percent. You know, there are people who are saying that, you know, there are there is an element of one-off in the revenues, margins and guidance. We looked at it, but even if you account for the one-offs, there is still a beat compared to what the street is anticipating. And the key positive, which is running through all the IT companies, is the recovery or some green shoots appearing in North America BFSI, which is the largest contributor to Indian IT. Back to you. Okay, all right, Rima. Thanks a lot for that. So that holds one end up to kickstart trades. So good going from Infosys. I'm looking at Dalmia Bharat, the first cement company to come out with their setup numbers. And it was a beat. On the top line, it was a mild beat because realizations on a sequential basis were flattish. The street was bracing for a bit of a decline. And clarity is awaited on this front because the other peers, they have reported a decline out there. Dalmia Bharat has high exposure to East and South India where pricing was weak. They bit our number. That's beautiful. Big beat on the, that front, and that's something that the street will take heart from, which resulted in the margin beat. However, the profit number, well, that appears more or less aligned. You'll be wondering, why is that? Well, there was a one-off post the operational performance, which explains why the profit beat wasn't as much. Well, how come there was an EBITDA beat, and how come the EBITDA number was better on a sequential as well as on a year-on-year -year basis? Because the total cost did come down both on a sequ sequential as well as on a year-on-year -year basis. And the key reason is the fuel consumed well, that's come down to around $106 per ton. That compares with around $115 per ton on a sequential basis and more than $150 on a year-on-year -year basis. So it's a cost-led beat. Realizations were flattish. The stock opens up in the green, but they'll be waiting by for management commentary that we'll get by around 11 a.m. later today. So start in the green, but we'll have to see what happens from there. Reema, coming back to you, though. Persistent systems, those numbers looked a little bit mixed, but you're still going with green because of the top-line growth. Uh, I'm going to go with green for persistent because growth was better than what the street was anticipating and plus the IT sector itself could be higher led by Infosys. So persistence revenue growth on expected lines has come in strong but a little stronger than expected 5.6% top line growth. Margins though have come off to 14% uh, slightly lower than street expectation. Deal wins are steady but the stock is down well 15% in the month of July. The conference call is currently underway. Back to you. All right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Reema, for that. A lot of IT uh, to uh, look at and uh, analyze, and we'll continue to do that. Thanks for that for now. JSW Infra is the next one we want to focus on. Vivek has got details here. Vivek, morning. Well, good morning. You know, JLW Infra has had a slightly soft start as far as FI25 is concerned. Uh, volumes were impacted on the back of a one-off, uh, which is a maintenance shutdown that was seen at JLW Steel's uh, Dolby plant. Now, looking at the numbers themselves, revenues are high by almost 15% on a year-on-year -year basis. So, despite the you know, maintenance shutdown, you actually saw cargo handle or the volumes higher by 9%, led by third-party uh, you know, volume growth. Uh, EBITDA down by almost 6% on a year-on-year -year basis, coming in at the 506 crore mark. EBITDA margins have dipped on a year-on-year -year basis, coming in just around the 50% mark. Profitability too down on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, down almost 7%. Now, cargo you know, handle volumes up 9%, and what's actually helped this time around is that the third-party share, you know, which was one key uh, factor that you know the street was looking at in terms of uh, JSW, in fact, saying that uh, a lot of the volume growth was actually coming in from the in-house customers or from the group itself. This time around, the third-party customer share is at 50% in Q1 FI25 versus 37% in Q1 FI24. Despite that, expect the stock to open in the red today. Uh, key to watch out for is whether the company can meet its volume guidance of 10 to 12% growth. Uh, but it looks like it could, given the fact that there is inorganic acquisitions of Navcar Corp and another one that the company has done in Q1. 
Okay, all right. Thanks a lot uh, for that, Vivek. Well, someone who's really looking forward to the weekend is Reema because she's had a very, very busy Thursday. Reema, a couple of more numbers you're looking at. Tell us, how are they? Yes, so in fact, I have Wipro also today evening apart from Reliance. <laughs> so yes, tomorrow is uh, when I really get to relax. Uh, but LTTS, so not all is green in IT this morning. There is LTTS where the revenues uh, and margins have come in lower than street expectations. In fact, a big miss. Revenues have contracted by 3% quarter on quarter. EBITDA margins are down 130 basis points. The company has held on to its full-year guidance of 8 to 10%, but analysts are skeptical because they're saying to achieve this full-year guidance after a 3% drop in Q1 is quite hard because you will have to deliver a 4% plus revenue growth in Q2, Q3 and Q4. So in the absence of an acquisition, this looks challenging. Tata Tech 2 has had a weak quarter, a miss on revenues, a miss on margins, a dollar revenue down nearly 3%, EBITDA margins are down 20 basis points. Uh, so I'm going with red for Tata Tech 2. All right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Reema, for that. And by the way, we'll be speaking with many of these managements here over the next one, one and a half hours or so. But uh, Tanla Platforms, Seat, Havels, JTL Industries, uh, lots of stuff to track. Sudarshan has got the uh, details of, for all these companies. Sudarshan, morning. Morning, Prashant. So I have four stocks, and we'll start with stocks that might react on the back of earnings, starting with Havels. Earnings had come in the market hours, and those were mixed. Revenue was higher than estimates, but margin has missed estimates. In the conference call that company had held post-market, it says cooling products performed well on the back of strong summer. It has seen many first-time AC buyers, but there was some impact due to elections in the Q1. Segment-wise, cables registered double-digit growth. Wires revenue impacted due to channel destock and commodity prices. Lloyd is now back on stronger growth path than before, and inventory levels in July are back to normal. Coming to see, it was a mixed bag. Revenue growth is healthy. It's up 9% year-on-year, but margin has fallen for third state quarter, and now it's multi-quarter low of 12%, and companies has higher input costs costs and increased rubber prices have impacted the margin. Tanla Platforms, Q1 is seasonally a weak quarter for the company. It has maintained revenue above Rs. 1,000 crore and it's up 10% year on year. Margin has improved sequentially, but it's lower YY to 18.8%. And its biggest segment, enterprise business revenue, is up 11.2% to Rs. 915 crore. And OTT contribution has moved sharply higher. In Q1 FY25, it has contributed 19.9% to total revenue against 7.9% Q1 FY24. Last is JTL Industries. As per the term sheet, companies looking to raise up to rupees 300 crore, and out of that, base size is rupees 150 crore, and green show option is of rupees 150 crore. Indicative price for the same is rupees 211 per share, which is a discount of 7% to CMP. So keep an eye on these stocks that might be in the focus. Thanks a lot for that, Sudarshan. Always on top of the ball. Thanks a lot for uh, giving us that list. Well, uh, here's a quick recap of all the top 10 stocks that we tracked for you. The ones with positive news flow. Infosys, Dalmia, Persistent Systems, Havels, JTL Industries and Tanla Platforms. Well, four of them will be reacting to negative news flow. JSW Infra, LTTS, Tata Tech and c -Ed. That's about the equity markets then. Let's tell you what went on in the commodity markets. As always, Manisha Gupta joins us to tell us about that. Morning, Manisha. Morning, Nigel. Thank you for that. Well, I'm looking at metals as a sector right now because we've seen uh, profit taking overnight into this one and the Asian markets seem to be reeling under some pressure as well. Well, the China plenum meeting has ended without any major announcement. Street was anticipating a big policy decision or a vision or some kind of uh, support for the uh, industry and the property sector as a whole, but we haven't heard any of that. So that has led to silver prices declining 3% overnight. We are trading below $30 an ounce. Copper prices are now trading at a three-month low. The Chinese demand concerns weak factory activity data, the manufacturing numbers declining for a second straight month also are weighing here. Not just copper, iron ore is trading at a one-week lows. The zinc prices are trading at a one-month lows right now. Aluminum is trading at a three-month lows as well. So all the gains that we saw in the month of April and May for many of these metal prices, uh, June actually saw a bit of a decline. And while July started on a positive note, we haven't seen that hold on. Not just the metal prices, if you look at energy, we've seen crude oil prices decline slightly as well. But here we've seen inventories in U.S. decline. There are concerns on Red Sea going on. Canada wildfires could impact 400,000 barrels per day going forward. So there are some supply concerns which are supportive of crude, but not so much of metals. All right, uh, <clears throat> Manisha, thank you very much uh, for that. We'll take a break here. We are back. Nishal Maheshwari, Chief Executive Officer, Institutional Equities and Advisory at Centrum Broking, will join us uh, to discuss fundamental stock analysis. 
uh, lost the track. We are back with that in just a bit. A little later, we'll also be joined by the Global Chief Executive Officer at Mastec to discuss their performance for the quarter gone by. Stay tuned.